What's it mean this time? I mean, you're really on strike. It's not just an informational picketing. Right. <laughs> Thanks. It's very unfortunate. I guess, I don't know, it should never have gotten to this point, but when you feel disrespected and not valued, and it's pretty hard to negotiate with somebody who's not willing to compromise at all. What's it like when, when you're trying to take care of patients? Is it safe when, when you're trying to take care of patients right now? Depends, I guess it depends on the patient's senses. Sometimes we're staffed okay. The problem is, is that when we're not staffed okay, nothing is being done about it. And you can only be in one place at one time, and your patients are counting on you to be there for when they need you. And uh, with um, so many patients, that you, sometimes you get admits and you just can't be there for all of them when they need you. Not only that, I know like, it, you know, in, in intensive care, you know, we get a lot of patients who are um, suicide risk, drug overdose, <laughs> things of that nature where they're a uh, one to one ratio. And a lot of times we'll get that in the middle of, of uh, um, when we're getting admissions and things are going on and we'll have crashers and those people need to be watched 24 hours a day. That's like a huge safety thing. And um, we're not able to do that with the staff we have a lot of the time. On top of taking care of our patients, like in the intensive care unit, our expectation is to be responding to cardiac arrest, traumas, uh, rapid response teams, uh, STEMI alerts, and other things that which pull us, um, one of the, at least one of the staff from ICO to other departments leaving frequently, our nurses either by themselves with the rest of the ICU patients from any given time from five minutes, half hour, sometimes up to an hour. Um, and then add a one-to-one -one in that mix yes. and say you don't have an aide to sit with a one-to-one -one -one and one of your nurses has to go for a code. So that leaves you with staff, with all your patients, plus now a one-to-one -one suicidal or overdose patient that you need to have your eyes on the whole time. So that leaves maybe three other patients who are just neglected for that period of time. And one may be on a ventilator with multiple drips going where vital signs can change in an instant. So um, definitely, and the backup that we get or if we have someone come and help us out generally are not from the department, not ICU trained. Um, we're glad to have that sort of help, but um, you have to know what's going on and how to, you know, figure out which alarm is actually really important and which alarm, you know, and then on top of still trying to fulfill your requirement per policy and procedure to take care of those patients. So. So they can call that safe if they want to, but whoever's watching this can make that judgment call if, if they would want their loved one in the hospital while something like that was going on. Yes. There we go. I know one day we tried to write down just in in general what a registered nurse would do in a, in a shift, regardless which department, what they work in. And I think about page three, we decided that, that you know, starting hands cramping up and... So come follow us, come jo you know, follow a day in ICU for 12 hours and I think, you know, the, our benefit package is fair compensation for the fact that, you know, you can go eight hours without a break. You really wanted to have supper, but, um, you know, a patient decided to have a cardiac arrest and now it's nine o'clock at night, you're too hungry even to eat anymore and you still now have your uh, multiple pages of charting and vital signs and... And at the same time, you, you still have the compassion to soothe the families and get them through it and educate. And so, and another thing, you know, this I worked this morning, so we walked off and um, we talked to some of the physicians last night, who, by the way, wanted to wear our m &A shirts in support of us, which, um, it, you know, the, the hospital administration says different things uh, to the public that we're being um, unnecessary or greedy or putting this, portraying this information that we just, we're just putting our wages out there and that we make six figures and all this stuff. But then we have our physicians who work next to us, um, who we communicate with daily supporting us. And that, to me, should say more to the public than what the hospital is saying. If the physicians didn't agree with us, they wouldn't be supporting us. They see what we do on the floor every day. They know how many times we call them in a shift. They know, I mean, we have doctors sometimes who will feel so bad for us for having a shift that we don't get to eat. They give us $100 worth and go buy some pizza. I mean, our physicians care about us and they know what we're going through. And to me, they know a lot more about us than our administration. That when we, we were in our um, meeting and Mitch Vincent and our administration came there and said, basically, we want to get rid of your sick time because uh, the sick time that you have banked right now, we have to keep that in an account. So you can't just um, use all your sick time. Like, if you were to quit right now, if every nurse in the world...
organization were to quit, we have to keep all that money in the bank waiting for you to quit. If they don't have to keep the money in the bank, they just pay it all off. So that's nothing but a huge payday for them. Don't claim poverty when you have all of these new, um, these new buildings and hiring new administration and then they don't have money to pay us sick time. It's not like we're asking for a $100 wage increase or something. We're asking for our benefits, which we deserve. And we Fairview Corporate has millions to gain. I mean, by letting us go on strike, it goes to show that they're willing to spend so much money bringing in scab workers and staff, and yet they're still going to make millions off of us if we allow them to let us go PTO, but we will not.